Today's video tackles the four things that I want you to know about your skin if you're pregnant. Now, pregnancy is one of the most remarkable, exciting, and probably downright scary times in a woman's life. You've got nine months ahead of you and a lot of changes are happening in your body. And whilst the skin might not feel like the most important thing in the world, it's certainly a time of flux for the skin. Lots of things can change. We talk about the glow of pregnancy, which is due to progesterone stimulating our sebaceous glands, making the skin a bit oilier, which can translate into dewiness. But of course, it can also create problems and you know, it's a time when you want to be fixing those problems. You don't be worrying about your skin whenever you are growing a small human inside of you. Um, so I think it's a really pertinent time to talk about this. A lot of people have had lockdown pregnancies and I just wanted to talk to you today about the four things I want you to know if you're currently pregnant when it comes to your skin. So the first key principle in a way is that pregnancy is a privileged state. We want to do no harm. And I think that that's something that any new mum to be is really conscious of the awareness that what you put in the body will have an impact on your baby, but also what you put on your skin can also potentially have an impact. So I think the key things to think about stopping are retinoids. Really, that's the biggest group. It's the most important group. Now, when I see patients in the clinic who have been using retinoids and they have them in you know, their skincare routine, they have they become very reliant on them. Maybe they have melasma, maybe they have acne, whatever the, the reason for being on a retinoid. What we do is we tend to plan that you will stop your retinoid when you start trying for a baby. So essentially, as soon as it's possible that you might fall pregnant, we stop their retinoid. Now that's good for several reasons. One, it just completely allays any anxiety around retinoid use. And the reason we worry about retinoids in context of pregnancy is because oral retinoids, and by that I mean Roaccutane or Accutane or uh, the generic name is isotretinoin, when taken by mouth for acne is a teratogenic drug, which means it affects the development in the first trimester. So it's absolutely fundamental that those kind of medications are stopped and if someone's on Roaccutane, we advise them not to fall pregnant for a full four weeks after stopping the drug because it lingers in the system and that they have a pregnancy test at the end of that so that they're absolutely clear they're fine now to go ahead and fall pregnant. But similarly, we tend to avoid vitamin A supplementation. So it's always best to discuss with your obstetrician what vitamins you should be taking and they'll recommend a safe pregnancy suitable supplement for you. But I think by extrapolation, we recommend not using a retinoid topically. So I think that's especially true of prescription retinoids, but I tend to recommend it across the board with all topical retinoids. Pregnancy is only nine months, um, and I think we can substitute other things into the routine to compensate. Other skincare ingredients I suggest stopping include um, hydroquinone, another prescription topical agent that is best avoided during pregnancy. Um, I don't tend to recommend the use of salicylic acid topically because we don't like the idea of um, people taking it orally during pregnancy. Um, it's probably not especially unsafe. Um, that's just my guidance because I think we have other better ingredients that we can use in its stead that are more, um, we're comfortable, more, more comfortable using. If you're on anything by mouth, always discuss with your general practitioner or whoever's looking after you for that particular medication, um, whether or not they are in fact preg pregnancy compatible. Many of the other drugs that we use for acne, such as tetracyclines and spironolactone are also not compatible with pregnancy. So again, really important to plan that you are weaned off whatever you're using for your skin, particularly in the context of acne, so that something else that is pregnancy safe can be um, substituted in so that you're not having that added level of anxiety that your skin is now going to go awry because you've had to stop everything because you're planning to conceive. The final thing worth mentioning in terms of doing no harm, that procedures, Botox, fillers, um, those sorts of things are best avoided until after you've had your baby. 
um, again, they're not, they've not been tested in context of pregnancy. So those are treatments where I would avoid them around the time that you're planning to conceive. So now let's think about the three things that we are likely to face or might face during pregnancy that affect the skin. So the first one I want you to think about is pigmentation. So the hormones of pregnancy can promote pigmentation in the form of melasma or cloasma or otherwise known as the mask of pregnancy. So you may not have experienced it before, um, but you may develop splodges of brown or gray pigment on the forehead, on the cheekbones, on the top lip, sometimes on the jawline, and even on the bridge of nose. Um, and this is probably as common as 40% of individuals will develop some degree of pigmentation like that. You'll also potentially see increased pigmentation on the line in the tummy called the linea nigra. Moles and freckles can all change um, a little bit during um, pregnancy because of the, the hormones that are swirling around your system. But specifically with melasma, um, the important thing to know is that sunscreen is your best friend. So I recommend all women use sunscreen preventatively in a way because that in itself can make such a big difference. So sunscreens, um, I think that mineral sunscreen is the most um, reassuring in terms of formulation because there has been a lot of noise around chemical filters, in particular avabenzone and oxybenzone. Um, but if you're at all worried, go for an all mineral sunscreen with uh, zinc and titanium. Um, Gossamer, for example, is, is pregnancy safe. And, you know, think about using your sunscreen really carefully if you live somewhere with strong sunshine. Think about sun avoidance. Think about getting a good hat. Brands I love are Scala, Eric Javits and Helen Kaminsky all do hats with the UPF rating. Um, and stay clear of things that, um, are strongly heated. So things like infrared saunas, um, just best to avoid anything that might otherwise aggravate and irritate your melanocytes and cause the pigmentation to get worse. So if you know you are pigmentation prone already, you might want to put in place an advanced attack to reduce the risk of melasma from developing or worsening. So active ingredients that you can comfortably use um, include azelaic acid up to 20% and that can be used twice a day and I am really reliant on azelaic acid to treat a variety of issues in context of pregnancy as it's safe and it's so versatile. Uh, you can also use vitamin C topically and niacinamide so I tend to use that trio together in a way to, um, to tackle hyperpigmentation. They'll all also help towards anti-aging and improving the evenness of your skin and the texture of your skin. So definitely things that you can try on top of wearing your sunscreen. But I think the key thing really is that sunscreen use, get the habit up, increase the quantity you're using and make sure you're reapplying through your day. The next thing to think about are breakouts. Now, some people find that when they get breakouts in everyday life, pregnancy, is amazing and they don't get a single spot and it's the best skin they've ever had. Other people, they get spots where they never had them before. And it, it's not really clear why, you know, one individual has a clear run and somebody else gets worsening acne, but it's a common situation. Certainly if you're acne prone, I do counsel patients that it might well cause things to rumble up because of the progesterone positive state that their bodies are in. So in terms of safe ingredients that we can use during pregnancy, we're back to azelaic acid again, but this is a really excellent substitute for your retinoid that is safe and as I say, can be used twice a day. And it's great because it tackles multiple points in the acne pathway. So it unclogs your pores, it's anti-inflammatory, improves texture and the post-inflammation marks as well. So a great a great one to, to, to sort of substitute in and not one that I would think of as being a poor man's replacement. I think it's a great ingredient in its own right. And you can use it twice a day, as I said, you can use it in the morning comfortably as well as nighttime. In addition to that, I'll often factor in some benzoyl peroxide, 2.5 to 5%. I never use a higher percentage than that. And that's great for treating any active new blemishes. So azelaic acid, great for treating the whole face, for treating the canvas using the 13 dot technique. And I'll link to that if you don't know what that is. But um, benzoyl peroxide would tend to use on individual blemishes um, once you've gotten your azelaic acid up and running and then just spot treat individual spots with the benzoyl peroxide. 
You can use it in a more widespread way if you're continuing to break out, in which case I would do benzoyl peroxide in the morning and then your azelaic acid at night. In addition, you can also use niacinamide. So that's a great ingredient to have built into another part of your routine, whether it's the moisturizer or your sunscreen. It's in both flawless moisturizer and flawless daily sunscreen. And that is an extra active that will help calm your breakouts, clear up that pigmentation, um, keep pores clear. So altogether, I think breakouts in pregnancy can be handled quite comfortably. And then the final category to think about is stretch marks. Ooh, I know, a bit hard to think. Um, so stretch marks are a tear in the skin's elastin fibers, which really means it's a dermal problem. This isn't something that's happening on the skin's surface. And we see stretch marks at different times in life. You can see them in bodybuilders' shoulders when they've put on a lot of muscle very quickly. We see them in teens during the growth spurt. And again, they can happen in the tummy um, and sort of thigh and hip area. So unfortunately, they do seem to be mostly um, driven by our genetics. A few studies have suggested that there might be other things at play, possibly lower than usual levels of vitamin C might correlate with stretch marks, but I haven't seen any hard data to say that that's an absolute, but it certainly wouldn't hurt to talk to your obstetrician about supplementing in um, a safe way with their guidance. In terms of treating them, um, I think it's important to say that things that don't work, there is no evidence to support the use of cocoa butter, um, of vitamin E. So don't waste time and energy on preparations that claim to have the solution uh, to stretch marks in a bottle because they contain those ingredients. Um, in terms of what you can do, really just simple hydration with on fragrance, non-irritating skin care um, to look after your barrier. And once you've delivered, if they really bother you, there are things you can contemplate. Topical retinoids, prescription retinoids like tretinoin may make some um, difference but you're talking about long periods of treatment, six months and beyond, in order to make an impact um, on stretch marks. So I have to be honest, I don't recommend that very often. Something to think about. Um, and lasers can help if you're acutely concerned about the redness associated with newly formed stretch marks. But know that with time, they will fade to sort of silvery quality and disappear. In the end, my feeling about stretch marks as somebody who has them on the thighs and buttocks is that they are so common as to be normal, a bit like cellulite. We don't have any brilliant treatments yet. Is there a lot of effort worthwhile putting into treating them? My feeling is not. So I think focus on your general health and well-being, caring for your skin in a safe um, and supportive way and try not to overthink and worry too much about stretch marks. So. I think that should be a good framework for you in terms of what not to use um, that you might normally use for your skin issues that, um, and also some suggestions of what is safe to use during pregnancy. Um, if I've missed any particular topics, or, you know, please leave me some questions down below. I'll be happy to answer those just to give you peace of mind because I really do appreciate how much worry the not being sure um, causes you when you're pregnant. Um, but it really is a time to be able to enjoy and be excited about the future. So I really hope this video has given you a bit of confidence and peace of mind so that you can take care of this um, whilst focusing on this. Um, other issues that you might get elsewhere in your body do have a low threshold to go and see your GP. There are certainly some rashes on the body that are quite common in pregnancy and might well need treatment um, and some guidance around what is safe to use um, to sort them out. So any rashes or particularly problems with dry skin, please do see your GP or your obstetrician for further information on that. All right, guys, I'm going to come back next week with a video on post-pregnancy skin care. What things you might start to be able to use um, once you've given birth to your baby. Um, but in the meanwhile, bye for now.